Dear students, today let's discuss about team teaching. Coming to the introduction, the long-standing notion of a self-contained classroom of 30 pupils taught by one teacher is giving way to alternative proposals. One of these proposals is team teaching. Team teaching is one of the resources, interests, and expertise. It is a new movement concerned with the quality of education and the restructuring of our schools so that they promote development and advancement of teaching learning process. Team teaching had its origin in America in the mid 1950s and it took root in the schools rather than at the universities. In 1963 William M. Alexander, known as the father of American middle school, was scheduled to discuss the structure of the junior high school at a conference at Cornell University. However, after rethinking the needs of adolescents at this age, he proposed the middle school concept where a team of three to five teachers would be assigned 75 to 150 pupils, organized either on a single grade or multi-grade basis. The meaning of team teaching. Team teaching is one of the innovations developed with the intention to improve the teaching learning process in the classroom. It encourages the use of teachers of particular competency for teaching a large number of students. It is concerned with the most efficient use of all faculty members. In team teaching, a group of teachers working together plan, conduct and evaluate the learning activities of the same group of students. In practice, team teaching has many different formats, but in general, it is a means of organizing staff into groups to enhance teaching. Teams generally comprise of staff members who may represent different areas of subject expertise, but who share the same group of students and a common planning for teaching. To facilitate this process, a common teaching space is desirable. Team teaching involves a group of instructors working purposefully, regularly and cooperatively to help a group of students of any age group. Teachers together set goals for a course, design a syllabus, prepare individual lesson plans, teach students and evaluate the results. They share insights, argue with one another, and perhaps even challenge students to decide which approach is better. Let's take up some definitions of team teaching. Singer, in 1964, defined team teaching as an arrangement whereby two or more teachers cooperatively plan, teach, and evaluate one or more class groups in an appropriate and agreed upon teaching plan and in a given length of time, so as to take advantage of specific competencies of the team members. In the words of Seflin, 1964, team is a type of instructional organization involving teaching personnel and the students assigned to them in which two or more teachers are given responsibility of working together for all or a significant part of the instruction of the same group of students. 
Let's now discuss some of the characteristics of team teaching. Team teaching is a teaching method. Two or more teachers participate in the teaching process. Team teaching is based on cooperation. All the teachers participating in the team teaching apply their resources, abilities and experience. All the teachers involved in the team teaching plan and execute teaching by full cooperation. Evaluation is also done on cooperative basis. During this process, the needs of the pupils, schools and existing resources are also considered. One topic is taught by two or more teachers turn by turn. The main aim of team teaching is to make teaching learning more effective. This method is based on collective responsibility and it avoids isolation. And thus, the whole responsibility is shared equally by all the teachers in the team. This method helps to create new instructional conditions and thus bringing more interaction and more innovation into teaching. Guiding Principles The guiding principles of team teaching can be discussed as under Time factor Level of instruction Supervision Size and composition Appropriate duties and learning environment Time factor. In team teaching, the duration should be decided on the basis of the subject's importance. To allot too much time to an unimportant subject makes the team teaching ineffective. Level of instruction. Before imparting instruction to the pupils, the initial behaviors of the learners must be observed and the level of instruction should be given according to the pupils Prerequisite knowledge. Supervision. The method of supervision depends upon the objective of the group. Therefore, the objectives of the group must be kept in mind at the time of the supervision. Size and composition. The present size of the class will decide the objective of the team teaching. The size and composition will decide the learning outcomes of the group. Appropriate duties to be assigned to the teachers. The division of the duties and responsibilities of the teachers should be appropriate. The duties should be assigned to each of the teachers according to their academic merit, interests and personality traits. Hence, the team members are to be selected very carefully in order to bring about an effective team teaching. Learning environment. Team teaching will be successful only if a proper learning environment is provided, such as provision of a library, a laboratory, workshop, etc. Let's now discuss the procedures in team teaching. Team teaching involves three major stages. Stage 1 – Planning Stage 2 – Execution Stage 3 – Evaluation Each of the above mentioned stages in the entire procedure of team teaching consists of several general activities which are given as under. Stage 1 – Planning in this stage, a number of activities are undertaken by the administrator and the teaching team. Like number one, deciding the topic to be taught. Number two, defining objectives in explicit terms. Number three, identifying initial behavior of students. Number four, identifying the resources available namely teachers, aides, buildings, etc. Number five, selecting a teaching team. Number six, assigning duties to each master of the team, 
considering their competence, skills, and instructions. Number seven, preparing a tentative schedule of teaching. Number eight, fixing up the level of instructions. Number nine, selecting teaching strategies. Number 10, deciding ways and means of evaluating the educational outcomes of pupils. Coming to the second stage, that is execution. This stage involves the following activities. Number one, diagnosis of the learner's state. Number two, adopting appropriate communication strategy. Number three, presentation of lead lecture by a competent teacher of the team. Number four, follow up work. The other teacher supplements the lead lecture by explaining the elements of the topic in a more simple way. Number five, providing motivation by the teachers. And number six, supervising student activities. The last stage, that is the stage three, and it is evaluation. At this stage, an attempt is made to ascertain whether the objectives of the team teaching have been realized or not. This information provides feedback both to the students and the teachers. This stage involves the following activities. Number one, based on the objectives of the topic taught, work is assigned to the students. Number two, evaluating the level of performance. Number three, diagnosing the difficulties of the pupils and providing them with remedial treatment. Advantages of team teaching. Team teaching has the following advantages. Number one, it contributes flexibility in teachers. Number two, it can be effectively used for teacher training. One or a team of trainee teachers can work with an expert teacher. Number three, it can help to develop professional status of teachers. Students can benefit from instruction by the most skilled and proficient teachers. Number four, team teaching utilizes space, materials, and equipments more effectively. We do have limitations of team teaching too. Some of the limitations of team teaching are as follows. Number one, team teaching demands more changes in the existing school organization and teaching practice. Number two, curriculum needs to be changed. Number three, Success of team teaching depends on the ability of the members of the team to work together harmoniously. The program suffers if friction develops in interpersonal relations. Number four, a lot of time has to be spent on plans for scheduling, for group activities, and for individual projects. And number five, Opportunities of pupil relationship may be lost because of the complexities of the program and size of the group. Finally, in conclusion, we can say that team teaching approach allows for more interaction between teachers and students. It allows faculty to evaluate students on their achievement of the learning goals and students can evaluate faculty members on their teaching proficiency. The emphasis is on student and faculty growth, sharing responsibility and broadening horizons. There is a clear and interesting presentation of content and student development and it has democratic participation and common expectations with cognitive, affective, and behavioral outcomes. The combination of analysis, synthesis, critical thinking, and practical applications can be done at all levels of education from kindergarten through graduate school. All things being considered, 
Team teaching enhances the quality of learning and it is sure to spread widely in the future.